Have you ever wondered how a kid with dyslexia, with a knack for innovation and a passion for entrepreneurship, manages to change the world of furniture and home decor? This is the story of IKEA, the giant retailer we all know and love. Introduction of IKEA. Ingvar Kamprad established IKEA in Almut, Sweden. It became a global success, mainly because of Ingvar's approach of providing cheap furniture. The motive behind his IKEA store and it being so cheap was simply because, back in the 1940s, furniture was considered a luxury and not everyone could afford it. So Ingvar, coming from a humble home himself, wanted to come up with something that would be affordable for people who didn't make a six-figure salary. In addition to providing a wide range of affordable and space-saving furniture products, IKEA is known for its focus on being responsible for the environment. IKEA has taken a few steps in reducing waste and boosting energy efficiency throughout its operations. Early Life Ingvar Kamprad came from a family with a background in farming and small businesses. His grandfather owned a struggling farming company, ultimately leading to his tragic suicide due to debt and an inability to repay the mortgage. However, Kamprad's grandmother was determined and successfully turned the business around. Growing up in this household and witnessing his parents' and grandparents' discipline and work ethic played a crucial role in shaping Ingvar's ambition and success. Ingvar's father owned a store and a small farm in their village, greatly influencing Ingvar's understanding of business, work ethic, and customer service. Their store served as a central hub for locals to purchase everyday supplies, while his mother managed and operated a small guest house to make ends meet. Even as a young child, Ingvar demonstrated an interest in business and a natural ability to generate income. During his school years, he acted as a supplier, selling matches to his neighbors. However, he adopted a unique approach. Instead of buying matches individually, he purchased them in bulk and sold them separately to maximize profit. He relied solely on his bicycle to deliver the matches to his customers. Ingvar's driving passion was always finding ways to minimize costs, produce high quality items at affordable prices, and make them accessible to everyone. He identified demand in the market and delved into those areas. He even ventured into selling pencils to his classmates and generated profits from those sales. The Journey At age 10, Ingvar had already assisted his family in various entrepreneurial endeavors, such as selling fish and holiday decorations. However, he struggled with dyslexia, a learning disability that affects reading or writing, which impeded his ability to grasp school subjects. Nevertheless, his astute business sense compensated for his academic challenges. Ingvar possessed an innate aptitude for thinking outside the box and generating creative ideas. By the time he reached 17, he had saved up a lot of money. With this money and additional funds from his father, he founded his own company, Birthing IKEA. The name IKEA, registered in July 1943, originated from the initials of Ingvar Kamprad's name, as well as the farm he grew up on, Elmtarid, and the village where the farm was located, Agonarid. The significance of this name lies in the small shed from which Ingvar operated his newly established business. Yes. IKEA hasn't always been the global empire we know today. Initially, IKEA operated as a modest mail-order business, encountering numerous challenges. Ingvar actively looked for highly sought-after products that he could obtain at lower prices and offer to customers at more reasonable rates. With this strategy in mind, he began importing and selling pens. Selling pens held promising potential since they were considered everyday items in high demand. However, Ingvar devised a captivating tactic to entice customers. He introduced food services for all visitors to his shop, creating an atmosphere that made customers feel valued. Not only did this enhance the shopping experience by instilling a sense of comfort and alleviating decision-making burdens from customers' mind, but it also increased the likelihood of customers spending more time in store and making purchases. Even today, IKEA stores continue to offer a variety of meals, including options specifically catered to children and Indian cuisine. While this technique attracted numerous customers, complications arose with imports, prompting Ingvar to transition from selling small items like pens to entirely different products. The Furniture Store While selling pens and wallets, Ingvar noticed a significant demand for furniture. He observed his main competitor, Gunner's factories, profiting immensely from selling furniture. 
At that time, furniture in Sweden was already quite expensive, necessitating Ingvar's improvisation. In 1947, he searched for local manufacturers who could produce furniture at lower costs, enabling him to offer it to the market at more affordable prices than his competitors. Ingvar's target audience consisted of mid-range income earners who lacked the financial means to indulge in luxury. He began by selling furniture tables, and this venture turned into a resounding success. Over time, he expanded his business and introduced additional product lines. However, due to his dyslexia, he encountered difficulties in memorizing product codes, leading him to assign unique names to each item. Sofas and armchairs, for instance, were named after Swedish towns and cities, while bedroom furniture has names associated with Norwegian locations. IKEA thrived, and customers adored their affordable products until the boycott era commenced. The Boycott Era A period known as the Boycott Era unfolded in IKEA's history in 1955, causing considerable turmoil. Competitors were displeased with IKEA's provision of furniture at such low prices, viewing the company as a threat. Concerns arose regarding IKEA's pricing strategy. As a result, in 1952, the Furniture Retail Association united and forbade all retailers from engaging in trade with IKEA. The message to retailers was clear, work with IKEA and we will cease purchasing from you. Survival became a formidable challenge for IKEA. Protests arose and individuals began questioning how IKEA's prices could remain significantly lower than those of other manufacturers. Demanding that the company increase its prices, Ingvar, however, stood firm on his prices. In response, Ingvar opted to import furniture components from Polish suppliers instead of relying solely on local production. It may seem logical to assume that this decision would result in increased prices, yet Ingvar managed to secure suppliers willing to offer furniture components at low prices. Thus, he proceeded with his plan, still generating profits. Evolution of IKEA Despite all efforts to boycott and coerce Ingvar into raising his prices, they proved ineffective. Five years later, he inaugurated a massive 72,000 square foot store, and IKEA's fortunes changed dramatically. IKEA began distributing booklets to customers, which detailed the names and descriptions of each product. It eventually evolved into the current IKEA catalog. Ingvar sought to revolutionize the method of transporting his furniture to customers. During a visit to the United States, he conceived the notion of customers selecting items directly from shelves paying for them, and taking them home themselves, which was kind of a self-service never done before. Ingvar implemented this idea in his business, but with a slight improvement. He focused on enhancing the parking space. With the growing prevalence of automobiles, Ingvar aimed to make customers' lives easier by ensuring they could easily find parking spots and transport their purchased furniture conveniently. He built massive parking spaces for that to happen. Additionally, Ingvar introduced flat pack ready to assemble furniture. This type of furniture arrived in pieces and was incredibly easy to assemble, enabling customers to construct their purchases without any woodworking knowledge or experience. This approach proved immensely popular as customers relished the opportunity to build their newly acquired furniture themselves. The instructions provided were user friendly with most pieces requiring nothing more than inserting a few screws and connecting the various components. This innovation not only resulted in cost savings in terms of delivery and inventory space, but also played a role in attracting more customers. IKEA also began selling roof racks for cars to further cater to their clientele. Global Expansion In the 1970s, IKEA embarked on international expansion, setting up stores in various European countries such as Germany, Switzerland, and France, thereby introducing itself to a wider customer base. IKEA's ambition did not end there. Today, IKEA boasts over 400 stores worldwide. Keen to address environmental concerns, IKEA has been actively working to reduce waste, increase recycling efforts, and explore innovative methods for reusing materials. Furthermore, the company has been searching for ways to incorporate recycled and bio-based materials into its products. What are your thoughts on IKEA and its remarkable history? Share your opinions in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to stay updated with our most exciting content as soon as it's published. 
Thank you for watching, and we look forward to welcoming you back soon in another video.